Global Leadership Podcast. Welcome to a bonus episode of the Bible Leadership Podcast. Today, I want to share with you from a video series that we call Core Leadership Concepts. You can find this on YouTube. Today, I want to talk about how to foster an optimistic team. Enjoy. So here's the deal. If you want the best creative input from people... You can't exasperate them. You know what exasperation means, don't you? That's when someone's ruffling your feathers, you're getting exasperated. It's like they're micromanaging you or or they're just riding you and, and, and nothing's ever good enough. And when we create cultures like that, we really shut down people's creativity. And so if you really want the best from your people, you've got to give them creative input. So leader, what you want to do is you want to create team environments where people know things do improve, things can improve. That's a cultural value. Here's how we talk about it at the organization I lead. We say, bring it further, make it better. No matter what team you're on, at least aim at 1% improvement in in terms of whatever system you're working in, whatever uh, encounter you're working in, can you make it 1% better? Now, once you introduce that concept to your team, bring it further, make it better, you've got to recognize there's some responsibilities that you have. You've got to create a relational environment where people say, the way we've done it is not necessarily how we need to do it. If you're holding people back, if you're really like addicted to the way you've done it before, you're going to shut down any hope of improving this thing. Here's another way to think about it. We're always willing to challenge what we used to do if it may be getting in the way of what we need to do. This means even as a leader, you need to open yourself up to accepting feedback. How is anyone else going to accept feedback if you can't accept feedback? You need to open yourself up to saying, we are going to need to change from time to time. Now, if you can accept change, then you've also got to be able to help others accept change. Sometimes if you've got somebody on your team that can't accept that there's going to be changes and improvements, you can give them some loving warnings. You can help try to help them understand bringing it further and making it better. But if they can't change, ultimately, one of the things you need to change is the fact that they're on the team because nobody gets to impede the progress. Nobody gets to shut down bringing it further and making it better. So what's the first one? We say, I'm going to bring it further, make it better. So the second important principle for creating an optimistic culture is wow before how. I think we probably ripped this off from Andy Stanley, but this has been a game changer in the organization that I lead. Wow before how. Someone from the front lines, maybe someone who's maybe not even close to uh, where you are on the org chart, they're going to come and they're going to have this idea that it's like, man, that sounds pretty good, but there's no way we could do it because of X, Y, and Z. And that's where we need to like totally put on the brakes on ourselves, not on them. We need to start with wow instead of how. We'll go into how would you ever make that happen? Like, what about this? And what about this? And there's just no way. And we shut them down. We discourage them. We teach them, hey, don't bring me stuff because I'm just going to shut your stuff down. Instead, we need to step back. We need to listen. We need to remember that often the best ideas come from the front lines because those are the people actually doing the work right there. So they're going to have some of the better ideas. And we need to just celebrate with them. Like, dude, even if you don't do the thing, enjoy the moment with them and tell them you believe in them. Like, wow, that is an awesome idea. There, there's, there's no telling how many times like in, in some of the uh, staff meetings that I've been a part of, like we'll stop and just be like, um, wow. Okay, I don't even want to go into how, let's just say wow, uh, because I want to affirm that this is a great idea. I really don't know how, but I still want to wow it. So we say, wow, hey man, great job. And we praise them. We say, that was an awesome thing to say. So thankful that you're creative. I so prefer having your feedback as opposed to not having it. I don't want to teach you that I'm the only one that can have an idea around here. So we overdo it, man. We we have to say, wow, before we get into the how. Now, of course, there is a time to ask how, but first we want to applaud it. And then we go, and before we shut it down again, because maybe we know better, we get some other feedback. We, we It's worth at least getting some perspective from somebody else. Have someone make the argument for it and the argument against it. Ask some really smart people, well, if we were going to try to do that, see, maybe your how isn't the only way it could be done. And so you ask some other people, hey, how would you do it? 
I mean, maybe I'm just, maybe my whole paradigm is way too constricted. Maybe I just need to be like, um, maybe there's five people that could come up with a more creative way to get to that wow than I could. So let's just have the humility to say, hey, I'm going to applaud everything that everybody brings me. And no question, sometimes people will bring you something that actually that's not a great idea. Like we've tried that or we really went after that like seven times and it just, you know, we couldn't figure it out. So unless you've got a better plan, we're, you know, we're not going to try that again. But we want to create that culture that is optimistic, that says, hey, man, when I've got an idea to bring it further, make it better, I'm going to get a wow before a how. And we're going to put all of our energies into creativity and encouraging one another because all that's going to do is draw out greater creativity out of our team. So how do we get the very best input from people? How do we keep people from feeling like we're micromanaging them? It's not that we just stamp everything with a yes. We still use wisdom. We have multiple counselors. But we just start with first... I expect everybody to bring further, make it better. Like I expect that. That's what you should do. So you always have permission to try to rethink how this could be better. And number two, wow before how. When someone says something, the whole boat's going to stop, man. We're like, whoa, let's look at this. That could be awesome. Let's get creative about the how. And maybe we won't do it, but it's worth poking at it because there's a lot of smart people that God has put in this organization. And we're going to try to teach them, bring us your smart stuff. Because when they bring us their smart stuff, the whole operation gets better. Hey, thanks so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed that core leadership concept. If you did, don't forget to like and share and do all those things. You can find more of those kinds of videos at my YouTube channel. There's normal episodes of the podcast as well and a ton of other stuff. Hey, if you guys want to help me out, go to my Patreon page and consider becoming a patron for as little as $3 a month. And you can find everything we're putting out at markcarter.life. Check back soon for more leadership content to connect your leadership to your Bible. Lead strong today.